It's time for the Candlepin Challenge, produced by CNA in conjunction with the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back inside the Woburn Bowler Dome. John Holt with Dan Murphy, and a big sigh of relief last week for Jeff Surrett as he broke into that top three. Yes, and the crying you heard was from Dan Goff here. Uh, if we could give him a few bucks for the number of weeks he held on to that third place, he'd have a pretty good chunk of change. But Jeff finally did it last week, and uh, we talked to him. He missed a 2-4 for a spare before the double strike. He thought maybe that was the end, but then he came back with a big double strike. Caught that third place, and uh, we got two terrific, uh, three terrific bowlers there for that final show right now. Of course, that could change over the final That's six weeks absolutely. of the regular season. We'll speak with Jeff in just a second, but first we say hello to Trina Fernandez with the Challengers. Trina? Hello, very. Hi, John. It's good to be back, and today we have Bruno DeFeo and Officer Bobby Betancourt in the house, and it's been a while since we've seen you, Bruno. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks. I, you know, went through a hernia surgery, double hernia surgery. It was a long road back, a lot of practice, and you now I got my feet wet again. I get a bowl against this guy, so see how it goes. So three years since we've seen you. Yeah. The hernia is feeling all better. Yeah. Everything it's healed. It's been about a year since the surgery, so yeah, yeah. it was great. Back in top form? No, well close but not right where I want to be yet so we'll see what happens today. All right, a little additional facial hair. I like it. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it took a while but yeah, thanks. Looks good. Thank you. All right, well good luck to you today. Bobby, welcome back. Thank we you. saw you last year. Our favorite officer from Danvers. <laughs> How's it going for you? Good. Glad to be back. Bruno, Bruno. I bowled with Bruno for a while now. This will be fun. And then the winner gets the chance to bowl Jeff. That's always a challenge in itself. But I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, how's the ball been rolling for you? Good. I've been throwing the ball pretty well. I've uh, got my kids here today for the first time to come and watch me bowl. So I'm a little excited and hopefully uh, can do it for them. Excellent. Well, for the kids, for both of your children, yeah. I hope you have a good day. Back over to you, John. Trina, thank you. 302. There's a nice ring to that number, isn't there? I like that. It'd be nice to get a little higher, but I like it. Last week, what did it for you? I mean, down the stretch, you, you really poured it on and, and delivered when you had to. Were you feeling a little pressure and the need to respond? No pressure. Just I missed the two panel, like Dan said, and just got me angry enough to throw the ball out there and put it where I wanted to, and uh, it was good. Well done. You know, I always remember you, Jeff, when you're this high with bowling against your dad, and your dad's probably looking down at all these scores you're throwing up. I know you had the talent, but the thing that amazes me is from the neck up, you seem to remain calm all the time. Are you that calm up there? Um, you don't want to know what I'm saying in my head, but, uh, <laughs> you know. It's a family show. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, uh, no, every ball, you just got to put it where you want and not, not get mad. Good luck to you. Well, good luck and see if you can better that total today. We're back with a Challengers match right after this on CNA. Welcome back to Woburn. Glad you're with us for another edition of the Candlepin Challenge on CN8. And it's a good look at our challengers today. A one-game challengers match. Bruno DeFeo and Bobby Betancourt set to duke it out. The winner to take on Jeff Surrett. Bruno will go first, joining us from Winthrop, Massachusetts. We use lanes 35 and 36 here at the Bolodrome. Just six weeks remain in the regular season. Right now, our three qualifiers in order. One through three, John Zappi, Bob Whitcomb, Jeff Surrett. See if anybody can break into that threesome over the final six weeks. Two of the three bowlers, Jeff and um, Bob Whitcomb, have appeared in their final show. Of course, Jeff winning a couple. Um, and, of course, we've got John Zappi, who hasn't been in the big show, but he had such a great run this year. So, right now, long ways to go. But for those three, it's a terrific show to, to be here. And we'll give you that tape date very soon. So keep watching. Bruno, after a seven, is on to box two. Takes out seven with one, uh, one ball. Just misses the mark. Pin went right around the nine in the back row. Ten box, seventeen through two boxes. Come on, Ben. Come on, buddy. Now to Bobby Betancourt gets a nice reception from the crowd. 
Peabody out of Metro Bowl. Bobby's been with us on several occasions. Records two wins and four losses. Starts with a spare. Back in 03, he beat Dennis Nuzzo 161-113, but then losing to Kevin Davis 285 to 250. Came back late in June, bowled against Dave Richards and lost 134-122. 04 against John Winchell. He lost 122 120. Close matches. Then he beat Jeff Surrett in December of 05, 126 129, before losing in a tough one to in the championship round to Jerry, uh, Jeremy Seaholm, 246 241. Bill of three and a nine box in the second frame for Bobby Bettencourt gets him to 22. Early five pin advantage over Bruno. Bruno DeFail also, same record, two wins and four losses. In 02, he was on uh, against Sean Baker, and lost 120 to 114, came back in May of that year, beat Bob Polari 109 to 101, before losing to uh, Scott Creighton in a close match, one pin, 241, 240. Came back against Phil Clough in 03, winning 122, 97, before, and then, uh, uh, beating Mike Morgan, 246-244 in a close match. And then he meet Dan Harrington in 03, lost 230, uh, 240-239 as defending champ. And then he lost to John Zappi, 139-110 back in 04. There you have the updates. Little look into the history of these two contestants. Still looking for his first mark, half Worcester left. Strike challenge is $825 today. Audience member Ashley Mayers will get a crack at bat between games one and two of the championship match. $825 of the jackpot. We have a sponsor for the uh, strike challenge also, so you might want to get a pencil and a piece of paper because this is an online candlepin store called oddball sporting goods they carry all the latest bowling balls bags shoes accessories novelty items all at very low prices so you might want to get a pencil piece of paper and i'll give you that the website when we have the strike challenge that's oddball sporting goods an online store proprietor tim riley What a try. Nice bit, Snapped that wood in front of the nice bit, six nice and bit. ten and almost got the five. Ten box for Bobby. Boost him up to 32. Games one and count for a six pin advantage. Opposite of ten now in the fourth. Watch this one, because it's quick. Tripping the six pin. Bruno with the fifth. The six, seven, eight. Oh. Tried to cut the six pin into the seven and the eight. Forty-four and Bruno still looking for his his first mark. pins left but behind the head pin should help that deflect toward the 10 pin oh 
Oh, the ball <laughs> came back. A little unorthodox, right, but it counts just the same. Sometimes that helps you get going. Bobby Bettencourt mentioned to uh, Trina that he's in charge now of public relations with the Danvers police. I guess that's when they, if they stop you, they say, uh, thank you, but you got to pay this fine or something like that. No, I'm only kidding. He relates to the public very well? Yeah, he says he's after our jobs now, though, because he's in public relations. So, no, just kidding. We have newfound uh, respect for our law enforcement people over the last few years, everything that's happened. He has a great job. So, Danvers police uh, cat. Uh, People should be glad they have Bobby on staff. So. Nine on his fill after the uh, strike and then a 10 box. I think Trina would get off, you know, this, the speeding ticket. I don't think you and I would get off. <laughs> He's got a certain charm we don't possess. That's right. Nice smile. Oh, well, he wants that wood to turn on the five, eight, and nine. A uh, tough piece of wood. Got to come right of the red line. But if his rooters had anything to say about it, it would have been down. <laughs> Brought a lot of rooters with him today. Cleans up for the 10 box. 71 and a 17 pin advantage. Minus this next ball though for Bruno. He's coming off the spare in the sixth. Gets three on the fill. box needs marks down by 14 box is completed Bruto in the eighth now off the mark seven remain up trouble getting on track here. And only a seven box. 74 through eight. Bruno with an average of 120, certainly below that pace. Bobby drops six. Two, six, seven, ten. Opposite the 10 box, he'll lose three and count. Take a look at Bobby's children. Excited for dad. <laughs> Get seven to go. One, three, and the eight in the back row. I uh, don't like that piece of wood in between the one and the three. Huh? Yes, they all go. Just enough to carry that eight pin. Not a good development for Bruno. I just can't seem to find the head pin. I've known Bruno a number of years. It's just uh, one of those days.
Bruno with the one mark came back in the sixth. Final box at 84. Adding to that. With a strike. <laughs> Two more like that would make it interesting. And you walk away with a part of that $1,000 that Dan Gauthier is almost spent it, but still waiting for a few weeks. It was a tough week last week for Dan. We don't need more bad news <laughs> for him right. this week. <laughs> So one more ball to wrap up for Bruno. Gets him up to 101 and Bobby Betancourt. It's gonna be the guy to advance from this match. He'll fill up his spare right now. He can start thinking about Meeting. Six on the fill. Officially push him past Bruno. A chance for some bonus money with three marks in a row. Off the wall and skidded the four pin back into the seven. Have a chance for the bonus. One, one to three six. One nineteen one oh one. It ends an eighteen pin victory for Bobby Betancourt, and he moves on to take on Jeff Surrett. Start of the championship match is next on CNA. Welcome back. We're ready for the championship match. Bobby Betancourt having advanced with a 119-101 victory over Bruno DeFeo, and he has earned the right to take on Jeff Surrett. As you alluded to earlier, Dan, they have met before on this program, and the winner was Bobby Betancourt. Yes, in the challengers match back in uh, December of 05. Bobby threw a 146 to 1, Jeff's 129. Jeff has won four weeks in a row. This would be number five in a row. And the uh, biggest victory was the latest one last week when he posted that 302 to qualify in third place for a top two game total this season. He can, uh, as long as he keeps winning, should he win out over the final six weeks, which would be a story in its own right, he would uh, defend that third spot at the very least and guarantee himself. First, a real tough challenge today in Bobby Betancourt. <laughs> Open in the first two. It was back when I was born. If someone's on a streak like Jeff is on now and he threw a big score, I'd like to be the next one in line. You, you think there would be, have to be some kind of a letdown. A uh, letdown for him, what is it? 250? 260? I don't know. But. Seven and nine, total 16. Let's see if Bobby can put up a mark early. Oh, good break there if the seven goes, and it does. Triangle in the right hand corner, six, nine, and ten. Can't give the nine. Right, nice nice Ten box. Up three. Very early. Eight, nine go. Leaving just the ten. An ugly piece of wood out in front, though. Now it could come out of the wall with the, with the other piece in the channel there. Oh, that's a great 
big shot. There for Bobby in the second. A lot more difficult than he made it seem when he threw that ball. You see the slow-mo. Jeff getting eight to go, nine to go. Just the eight in the back row now. He has some tough wood to play. It's like I would, I would take all three pieces. Got it. So his first mark comes to the third, a spare. See the replay? Actually comes off the left side wall. Yeah. Two, four, and ten. Oh, that wood was coming across. And the second piece stopped it. Nine box. Jeff at 42 through four. Here's Bobby's fill following that spare in the second. He's the one two seven. Got to catch the headpin here where the wood should should convert it. Oh, how did that two pin stay up? Amazing how you can get the headpin and the seven pin and leave that one. Got all ten though. Moves to thirty seven. Seven nine. Make it work, make, make it work. Brother. Obviously, gonna play that one closest to him. Yeah. Yes, a nice shot. Second mark of the match, championship match, anyways, for Bobby Bettencourt. Take a look at that one in slow mo. Very nicely done. Jeff in the fifth takes out six. Five, six, eight, nine. I think somehow he's going to have to play that wood on the left. all 10 up to 52 one mark for Jeff over the first five spare the third so at the five and the eight On his object pin, the five, but just two full and one right by the eight. A couple ten boxes in a row open for the last three. Jeff climbs to 62. Bobby, after the spare in the fourth, he'll fill it up in box five. He's a five eight. Your head on it, Same two pins that Jeff just shot at. Let's see if Bobby can take that. Oh, he does. Two in a row. Bobby is testing the champ here. Game one of two. To crown a winner this week. Six on the fill. Looking for bonus money. Three marks in a row. Diamond leave. Two, four, five, and eight. He'll earn the fifty dollars if he can corral these four. Right, All right, Jay. Stay off. Come on. Grab the sticks. Grab the sticks. Gets 
the nine to move to 80, and the challenger is up by 18. Interesting. Back with the end of game one after this on CN8. Back at the Bolodrome, and we remind you that time is winding down on this season, and as such, your opportunities to come to a taping. That's right. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact, 9 o'clock we start, and we'll do four shows tomorrow, and uh, it's the last regular season taping as far as the four shows go. The only one that would be left would be that one, June 3rd, and that's the final show. Our top three scores, and they'll go at it for the big prize at the end of the season. So if you can't make it tomorrow, make sure you make it June 3rd. We're ready to uh, continue here, game one, the championship match, and Jeff Surratt to step in, down 18 pins, as the champ being tested by Bobby Betancourt. I should tell you, June 3rd, remember, that I don't know if you caught it on the screen, that's a one o'clock time, it's only one, one match. Don't show up at nine, you'll get choice seats, but you'll be waiting a long time. <laughs> Off the wall for a mark for Jeff, his second mark of the match, both spheres. The fill in the eighth. Oh, break, break there. Looked like the spread eagle minus the 10 pin, but the six fell into the three, and now he's looking at the two, four, and seven, and it looks like that double piece of wood should take those three out. Two in a row. He'll have a bonus money opportunity when he steps back in. Bobby now in the seventh. Oh boy. Right in the pocket. Not much to show for that, although he's got a piece of wood next to the five. Oh, terrific shot. Terrific spare. Hey, throw one and done. Let's go, baby, right now. Just enough with that wood to keep the five pin in play and clear the other three pins out. Fill of seven. I think I'd go the right-hand tip of this first piece of wood. Oh, almost. A little more. It would have snapped toward that seven, uh, ten pin. That's concentration. <laughs> That's a ball rolling back. Managed up the to lane. keep his focus in his previous ball game, rolling back toward him. Got a nine. Couldn't pick off that ten. So Bobby up to 106. Up 17 pins, minus his next ball, Jeff, which is his fill. That's a fill of six. And with that wood behind the six pin, you can undercut the two and the four and still make this. Up to 105 through 9 for Jeff Surrett. We're going to be set up for a very competitive game two. 3 6 10, all alone on the right, 4 7 on the left with a piece of wood in front. It's the 3 and the 6. One fourteen. The game one score for Jeff. Bobby is going to take a lead into game two. Three and seven. I just got a feeling he's going to cut this over into the seven. I don't know why. Tough shot. Too far right. Stay down, stay down. Stay down. There it is. That's one ball too late. 
his lead at two, plus whatever he puts up in box 10. Oh, he is. They go, leaving only the seven. Boy, a mark would be huge for momentum. Got a little guide. Got it. His fifth mark of this game, all spares. Two, four, five, seven, now in the tenth. Got to watch Bobby over the years come on the show, and today he seems just a lot more aggressive up there at the, at the line. He's making some terrific spares. Six more. That'll extend his lead to 18, 132 to 114. And the champ rally in game two. We'll begin to find out next. Buster Strike Challenge when we come back. Hello, welcome back, everybody. It's time for our Strike Challenge, and our lucky contestant today is Ashley Mears. Ashley, I heard you're saving money for a special reason. For our wedding. Wow, so would $825 help you out? Yes, it would. <laughs> Maybe with the honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Right, do you bowl a lot? Yes, on Sunday nights in Franklin. Excellent. Well, go get a strike. Thank you. Good luck to Ashley. As she shoots for $825. Needs a strike to get it. Here we go. Right up there. Spare now. That'll get her $50. See if she can get it. Take the ball down with the second ball. All right, a buck a pin, so she's at five dollars right now. Can add to that. Five dollars for Ashley. Tip one of the bartenders at the wedding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to say that the uh, Odd Ball Sporting Goods uh, store, online store, so if you went online and just typed in oddballsportinggoods.com, you come up with uh, their website. Uh, Tim Riley uh, owns the, uh, the online store, and you can get your latest bowling balls, bags, accessories, novelty items. You can also go just channelconstore.com and get to the same uh, website. So. We want to thank the Oddball Sporting Goods Store for financing or, or for uh, supporting us here at the Candlepin Challenge on the Strike Challenge. Bobby picks up right where he left off. Mark in the first. Starts with an 18 pin advantage over Jackson. Good fill of seven. Nice ball, buddy. Nice ball, nice ball. Shoot it! Oh, what a spare! <laughs> and what wow. a reaction! Wow! He's relating to his public very well there in the front row. Cut the five pin into the ten. Ten comes off the wall for the nine. Terrific! Jeff trying to find an answer. Jeff hopes he can do as well the first two boxes and don't fall further behind. He can start that by corralling this nine pin. Again, he has to climb out of an 18 pin deficit following game one. Fill of six. Post an open frame opposite that second spare from Bobby. The challenger look good, good. And he was here last week watching Jeff, so he knows he can string them together. So you can't look back. You've got to just keep putting those marks up. You know, I am surprised the way Bobby's thrown his ball that he hasn't had a strike yet. Makeable spare with a double piece of wood. Two ways. The ball could come off the left side wall after hitting the piece of wood, or they'll both come off the wall. Yes. 
three in a row, and that's $50 worth of bonus money. Stay down, B. Stay down every time, kid. Ball right into the seven pin. Oh, I can't believe that. That was Barry, too. He leaves himself the four pin and the nine ten. I don't know if you take the front piece of wood or not or try to cut the four pin into the wood next to the nine pin. He's going to take the one out front. And thought he'd get a couple of them. He didn't get any of them. An eight box ends his run of marks, but already at 60 in this game. Through four. What type of answer does the champ have? Here he is in the third. Speculation on my part, but after he, he broke through to get that 302 last week, it was a weight off his shoulders. Perhaps there's not the same intensity this week. Could be. Always uh, you worry about that letdown after throwing big scores like that. That's why I said, you know, if I'm bowling against him, I'd like to catch him after a big week like that. But that's uh, a long ways from over. Don't throw him. It's not on the head pin like he has the last couple weeks. Body English tells me a little more that he might be just a little off and trying to find it. And things like that happen. <laughs> Looked like he should have carried the 10 pin, or 7 pin, but it didn't happen. Get the 10. Down 18 in this game, 36 overall. Right through the middle, spread eagle. Last couple weeks, Jeff has had a spurt, strung marks together in game championship matches. Two weeks ago to ice his win, and last week to uh, get him to that 302 total. And join the two other qualifiers north of 300 as their top three two game totals this season. There's a big strike. A big strike and running out of boxes is our champ now. You knew that was due? Yeah, long overdue. Just putting the ball in the pocket. Terrific spare. Spare in the fifth. Almost another fantastic shot. So Jeff Surratt in a, a big hole. Bobby Bettencourt in great position to become the new champ. Can he do it? We'll find out next on the CNA. Back to the final four boxes of the championship match and the challenger, Bobby Bettencourt. In good shape coming off that strike in the six. We're going to add to his big lead. Same good ball, same good ball, kid. Get head on it. Currently up by 29. Come on, that's it. Adding to that. Two marks in a row. Spear on strike. Just 
four on the fill. Piece of wood in, be help, in between should help him a little bit. He's still got to hit the two four. Oh, he missed. He cut in front of the piece of wood. Ten box to one twelve in this game. <laughs> Jeff with a half Worcester to the left. I mentioned to you a couple weeks ago that, you know, as we tape on Sundays, Jeff had bowled ten strings in a match on Saturday night. The night before, last night, that is, as we speak, so perhaps catching up with him a little bit here, coupled with the 302 he got last week and the heat being off, not on top of his game. Well, he certainly isn't on the head pin with that first ball like he was the last couple weeks, so that's the big part of it. I think a couple boxes ago he resigned himself to the fact that he wasn't going to win this all about what the final margin will be now for Bobby Betancourt. consistent 132 opening game is going to be right around that 130 mark again uh, there's a pin missing on 36 yeah he caught it yeah missing the nine pin oh, now he's missing the five yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to finish up on lane 35. While they take a look at 36. Very consistent, as you, you said, Dan, 132 now. 131, 263 total. He is going to be our new champ. Jeff Surrett will make it official by finishing here. Made it a four-week run, and as of right now, we will see Jeff again for the championship show. Change over the final five weeks, though. Someone can surpass 302. Jeff is a recent home buyer. Uh, the money he's accumulated over the last three seasons on this show. Certainly worth a couple mortgage payments. <laughs> Hopefully we're invited to the housewarming party, considering our goodwill to him over the last few seasons. <laughs> and that's it. 99. Wow. Jeff Surrett didn't, didn't get the 100 in that second game. But boy, has he had a great run. We'll likely see him again this season. 50 pin win. 263 to 213. Back with the wrap up after this. Back in Woburn for the wrap up where we have a new champ in Bobby Betancourt. That's right, you know, we had the fireworks for Jeff last week and you got to think that mentally he just wasn't there, it wasn't that first ball wasn't there. But you know, Bobby Betancourt had 260 
262 or 263. It could have been a lot more than that. He put some balls in there, left some weird splits, but he picked up some terrific spares. He deserved a champion. Bowled really well. We'll speak with him in just a second. But first, Trina standing by with the runner-up. Trina. Thank you very much, John. I'm a little bit at a loss for words here because I never thought I'd have Jeff Surrett over in my corner. So we'll talk to you in just a second, Jeff. And Bruno, you were first time back in a while. Had to get a little rust off. How'd you feel? Uh, it was a little bit rough. I was tight a little bit. You can't do that one string. All the bowlers know anything can happen in one game. So you come in a little bit tight, can't throw the ball where you're going to throw. You don't have enough time to come back in second, third string. It just doesn't work that way. So. Right. A one string is always a tough format. Right. It is. It is. Well, hopefully we'll see you back again next year. Yeah. Hopefully. All right, Bruno. Thanks yeah. for coming. And Jeff, well, the good news is, as of right now, you're in the top three for the finals. Bad news is, that was just the, that was a bad couple of strings there. Thank you. Yes, that was, uh, that was pretty bad. I ran out of steam, and uh, I came, did what I wanted to, and... Hopefully you'll see you in a few more weeks. Well, I think you had a, a pretty good run there, so you have to be happy with that. Oh, very happy, very happy. Yeah. Well, we all love watching you, and in fact, the game before, you were so exciting. That was a fun week. This wasn't so fun, but, uh, yeah, you know, do what I can. Right. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> we're, li we're lucky to have you on the show, so we're glad that you're here, and, and I'm happy to have the <laughs> chance to talk to you. I know you don't want to talk to me, but we'll head back over to John now. <laughs> We've got uh, Bobby with us and uh, two of his children, one shy, one not so shy. <laughs> Congratulations, you really look comfortable out there. Thank you, I felt good today. I had a great cheering squad and I brought my two lucky charms with me and uh, to be honest, it was an emotional day for me. This is, uh, I dedicate, I haven't won on the station yet and I really wanted to and I dedicate my dad and my mom a little sick. I wanted, they couldn't be here today, but I wanted to win that for them and that's why all my fans were here and I was really appreciative. It made me feel good up there. Good for you, congratulations. Thank well, you. We know the class guy you are and that's nice to say that, but you know what? I thought you could have had 280, 290, even a 300, the way you were bowling, throwing that first ball. I felt, I really did feel good. I knew I had to be. Jeff's the best. I mean, really, he's, you know, there's no one better out there, and it's always a challenge. That's why I didn't want to give him a chance to come back. But I knew I felt good today. I got a lot of tough leads, made a couple shots, but it was fun. It was good Great. Time. Good bowling. Bobby Jr. wants to bowl. He's going to get his shot, right? He's going to go bowling. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks Bobby, a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. And we'll see you, too, right here on CNA for the Candlefoot Challenge.